Welcome back to City Skylines 2 everyone, where we are building the sort of realistic North American themed metropolitan area of Riverview. In the most recent episode, we moved south of the main city of Riverview, building a really nice airport down here and connecting it up with all sorts of public transit. So we've got lots of railway activity here as that is connected up with the commuter rail line to the rest of the city. Uh, we've got tram lines as well and we've of course got lots of traffic pouring through, lots of uh, car parks and whatnot. And for today's episode, I am very excited to announce that we'll be introducing mods and the developer mode for the very, very first time here in City Skylines 2, uh, on my channel at least. And that's going to enable us to do some very, very detailed, highly specific builds. And we're going to start out by implementing the um, vote that won the other day on my channel. You guys at the Riverview City Council voted to turn this older industrial block here into a high-rise hotel instead of a residential complex. And this is very exciting because a build like this is exactly where some custom mods and developer mode is really going to shine. And if you enjoy my content, hitting the like button is going to help me out a ton. And if you don't want to miss out on future votes, other important decisions and uploads, of course, then consider subscribing as well. Most of my viewers aren't subscribed, so maybe you've just forgotten to. Thanks in advance. All right, so let's just pause the game and clear out this space. Uh, and then I'm going to go through the mods as we use them. The most important thing is actually going to be the implementation of the developer mode because it really does uh, provide a lot of freedom when building uh, in this game. So I'm, I'm happy to, to get started with it. I've been reluctant up until now. I want to learn the vanilla ropes as much as possible and kind of maximize the potential of the vanilla game. But the things are getting a little stagnant by now uh, with the delay of the uh, region packs and and other content due to focusing on um, performance so i think it's time we implement um, some more custom things into the city i'm going to dezone the existing zonage here and then i've just used the i'm gonna use the pavement path to make the zoning a little easier to work with because i want to place the hotel here on this very corner facing the the waters and just for good measure, I'm going to delete the industry over here as well. I uh, don't want polluting industry to be this close to the area now because we are going to slowly but surely start redeveloping this inner port to more commercial office and residential use uh, as industry has generally moved up north. So to give a turbo tutorial on developer mode, you pretty much just add developer mode to your launch options in Steam in City Skylines 2. Then when you open the game you can hit tab to get the main menu to spawn uh, you can do a bunch of game manipulation here some is probably a little more dangerous than other stuff uh, i've just removed the chance of clouds and removed the chance of uh, of rain for starters creates this nice sunny atmosphere all year round um, and that's the tab menu if you hit home this is where the magic really happens because you can filter through and search through uh, pretty much every single object in the game and you can place them to your liking with this object menu in place we can find just the hotel that we actually want so if i go to the search bar and you can see i have a pretty thorough search history already of just playing around with it and we search for hotel um, you'll see that everything with hotel kind of pops out we've got uh, north american and european themed ones we've got all the building levels uh, we've even got the um, like the pre-order buildings or signature buildings or whatever um, to also be filtered through this search of course anything with hotel basically uh, but if we narrow it down to level 5 buildings for instance we get a much smaller selection uh, and I promised you guys a high rise that's what the uh, development group actually suggested for this plot of land in the vote so that's what you guys are going to get so one thing that's important to note if we place a building is that it needs to actually be placed on appropriate zoning. So if, if I grab this uh, six by six, this thick boy here, and I just place it randomly like here, uh, it's probably not gonna work. It's gonna despawn because I can't actually uh, fill the majority of the building with the appropriate zoning type. Uh, so going by that, what we see here is that we've got you know it's it's very wide but it's only about five tiles deep 
on the uh, deepest side and if we want it on the very edge here it's only four zoning tiles deep so with that knowledge in mind uh let's go for a maybe a six by four and let's just check we've got a real building here and th this is the european version and they did suggest a high rise so this is actually what they'll be building so let's just get that placed and as you can see, the building has immediately been condemned, so to say, which means that it's going to despawn. Uh, and the reason is that I haven't actually provided the appropriate zoning. So I'm going to go for North American high density, because that's where this hotel would generally fit. And as you guys can see, it's now fully functional. So if I hit play, we are actually going to get, you know, a hotel to move in and establish a base here. Now this hotel is cool and all and it's a pretty sizable building but it doesn't really fill out much of the block here. So I'm thinking we're gonna implement a construction site and then we're gonna have another vote to see what building will accompany this one. Uh, so for this corner here we're gonna try and create uh, a custom uh, construction site and then of course I'm gonna have another vote on the channel uh, in the near future where you guys from the honorable respectable uh, Riverview City Council can decide on what to actually build here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm I'm just trying stuff out here, but I'm lowering the ground to kind of uh, showcase the development of the the basement, and it's probably not gonna be this low because we are near the water, so uh, there might be some issues construction and engineering wise with going that low. So maybe we'll do something like this. And then what we're going to need is a surface um, that actually looks like a construction site. And we've got a few options. So this is the ore surface. We can try to do the oil surface as well, if I can actually. Yeah, it looks like that. Hmm. This one, this... No, wait. The oil one is probably the best bet. Uh, it would make sense that there's quite a bit of sand in the uh, in the soil here giving the proximity to the to the river so uh, what i'm gonna try and do now is carefully sort of carefully create our construction site with the uh, well this is basically a surface painter right uh, which is a much needed tool and it basically looks like this I'm actually, I'm going to try the, uh, the all one as well, just to see how that looks. And I don't know about you guys, but I think it actually looks a bit better. The oil surface is just maybe a bit too bright, actually. Um, now, we're of course going to have to add some props to this uh, construction site for it to actually look nice. And I'm going to go a bit random here because I don't know what I'm really doing. Just having good fun with these tools. Uh, so we're gonna try and add some cranes can we have one over here as well so that there's like two cranes that would be very cool not sure you'd actually move two cranes into place at this point in time but uh, yeah looks cool right uh, and then for the props well we don't have um i haven't been able to locate at least some dedicated like construction props uh so i'm just trying to like add some some random stuff some barrels of i don't really know what you'd have in here but whatever uh, we might even be able to find like can we find something that looks like a tractor of some sort all mining tractor can i connect these two i can there you go that looks pretty good Maybe even a trailer or two. Oh, we've got car trailer props. Just a bunch of random stuff here. That I think we're going to be placing as well. <laughs> a tractor trailer or two. Yeah, why not? Place that right here on the... Kind of clipping into the sidewalk. Um, but that's pretty good. Uh, let's see if we can concrete barrier or a safety barrier even actually let's just go for like a fence an industrial fence of some sort maybe or residential even 
Yeah, I think this will do. Now, a cool mod I'm using is the Line to Light by Algernon. So if I hit Control L, I actually get uh, the tooling I want and I can enable fence mode as well. Uh, and this is, of course, where it gets really, like, really good fun, right? Because we can start actually fencing in uh, this construction site here. And I, yeah, I'll be able to continue with a new segment. And it's gonna look a, a bit shoddy, uh, but that's okay. It's a construction site, right? I mean, it has to be a bit messy. There we go. And I just realized that this loader element actually has a bit of an animation and it's creating a bit of sound as well, which is pretty cool. I guess that just adds to the effect. Now, we can of course do really cool things with this uh, surface tool through the developer mode. Let's say we'd want a small surface parking lot here for people that wish to visit some of the staying guests. We'll bring up the home menu again just added some trash piles to the construction lot uh, we'll grab one of the pavement surfaces and we can just uh, rather easily branch out from a road let's go with something like this we can easily uh, change it as well it's a very very flexible system to use fortunately and we'll create a surface like this then if we search for parking decal uh, we've got lots of options here. For instance, this double one, which I quite like. Let's go for a diagonal. I think that's going to look good. And it comes in a big pack that's easy for us to uh, to use. So I'm just going to just going to place that here and then I'm just going to if I pick a surface again, it's going to allow me to easily manipulate an existing surface. We might want just a bit more. So I'm just going to align another segment. And then I can't bring it all the way next to it. That's just a limitation, basically. Um, but if I place it here, I am going to make room for a planter, basically, or what's going to look like a planter, at least. So if we just bring this up here, we can tailor the surface exactly as we want it. And if I disable snapping, of course, I get even more freedom. And that looks pretty good. Now, unfortunately, as far as I know, we should refrain from placing any actual cars on these parking lots for one it's not gonna work they're gonna be placed elsewhere in the city and they're actually gonna function as actual vehicles uh, which is gonna crash the game so we're yeah we're not gonna do that um but yeah if you've got trailers or other things that don't really function or move then you can do that comfortably but no cars unfortunately Anyways, let's continue with some more surface creation to really fill out the space. So I'm going to pick one of the tile surfaces that I like to try and create a bit of a... What do we actually call it? I guess you'd call it a pattern of sorts that kind of connects up to the hotel. Unfortunately, there's a hitch surrounding this specific hotel, but yeah, that's just how it is, I guess. But working with this tool is very, very easy. It's a real pleasure to, uh, to work with and create something that you think is, uh, is nice looking. Then we can fill in um, our empty spaces with one of the manicured glass players. Uh, grass? Glass, yeah, that'd be a lot of fun. Grass, I meant. And we've got a bit of an issue here with overlapping items, so I'm gonna hit tap to bring up the um, developer mode menu. Then I'm gonna jump into simulation and I'm gonna say bypass validation results. And this is pretty much anarchy mode in City Skylines 2 uh, because that's gonna allow me to create my planters without any issue. So there we've got a stretch of manicured grass. 
Uh, so that's, of course, a pretty cool addition as well. Uh, so I think I'm just going to move ahead and do a bunch of detailing of this area. And then I'll get back to you.
All right, I think that covers the amount of detail we'll be putting into this uh, hotel uh, for now. And I'm pretty happy with how it uh, turned out. Um, in case you haven't noticed yet, I'm also using a mod which actually instantly grows the trees, at least whenever I hover over them after I'm placing them. I'm gonna see if I can showcase up here. Yeah, you can probably see what I mean. They instantly grow to full size and they also live for a little longer. So that's a nice mod as well. I'm, I'll make sure to uh, put a picture up now. Um, but anyways, I'm uh, not going to spend more time here. Uh, also, just took the chance to add a an office building, a, uh, a bit of parking lot here, as well as a residential tower. It is complaining a bit about ground pollution, but I don't think it's enough for them to actually move out. So uh, yeah, capitalism wins again, bros. <laughs> Anyways, for the construction lot here, we're gonna have a vote in the future uh, on what type of development to, to actually build here. If you've got suggestions or you sit there thinking this is perfect for a uh, tall, sleek office skyscraper or it's perfect for some uh, luxury condos or whatever, feel free to post a comment and I might include that in the in the voting options. So let's take this nice tool set and try to solve some of the issues of the city. We are currently at the intersection of Main Street and Valley Street and as you can probably see uh, this is an area that is just buzzing with activity but it is also pretty centrally located uh, on the outskirts of downtown. Uh, and an issue that's plaguing the city is that of high rents and I also kind of see it as high mortgage burden so housing is very expensive here as well as rentals um, and one way to solve that is of course to just provide more housing. Uh, we've got a district down here um, that is very very cozy it's got a bunch of beautiful old row houses uh, and it's a very very desirable place to live it's uh, so close to downtown uh, like you can follow pacific street into the heart of downtown from here as you can see uh, you can catch the the trams very easily alongside main street which will bring you to just about anywhere in the city and you are of course also in walking distance to the riverview central station so it's an area that i think we should probably upzone just a bit so we're gonna hit pause uh, hit home as well to kind of bring up our uh, little menu here and then we're gonna go for some North American medium residential maybe level 5 to just get some really beautiful buildings here and then we're just gonna go by zoning so we've got a 4x3 here let's see if we can find something fitting we've got this building here which I mean that's already a winner right We've also got a path uh, behind here that we could actually uh, we could remove if we want an even more beautiful building. So let's just check out some of the ones we have available. Let's see if there's a, there's a five by six that is also really gorgeous, and the five by five. But I, I think the the three by three we found. Oh, sorry, what was it? It was four by three, right? Yes, this one. Uh, this one is really beautiful and it's not specifically a corner building but it does have windows on the side so that's gonna do just fine so i think we're just gonna place that here and of course we need to get we need to get our zoning in place just to ensure that it's gonna stay there and just oh just look at the view yeah okay lots of smokestacks but otherwise the views are pretty fantastic you can look to east river view you've got the full spectrum of the mountain ranges to the east you've got the ferris wheel and love island lots of lots of really nice things about this location let's see if we can add in um a building more we'll just oh what am i doing something i shouldn't and i just remove this menu thank you whoops uh, medium level five and then we'll see uh, buildings that are three tiles deep and see if we can find something else this is probably variations of the same building uh, pretty much oh, this is a little different and pretty good looking as well so let's see i think this location here is pretty good so i'm gonna disable snapping and then just turn it around because then i can actually 
align it a little closer to this pathway. And as you can see, it's got the condemned logo here. So that means it's a little too far away from the... I'm just... I should sew this up first. Sorry. Uh, but th the cool thing is that you can actually... You can place it again if you want a different color. But you could also just like place it a bit further away from the road. And as you can see, it's still going to function just fine. I'm just going to place it normally again. Actually, I want, I want this color style. That looks really sweet. Let's have a look. Yeah, pretty fitting. Uh, we'll see if we can actually fit in one more of these beautiful buildings. And we can go a bit deeper here. We can actually go by five. And that really enables a look at this building. That is just... That is just gorgeous. Really, really gorgeous building. So I'm going to get as close to this little pathway as I can and place it there and then we are of course gonna provide the amble zoning and this is probably a case where it seems like i have to just move it a bit closer and closer still oh there's actually there's a, an issue here with the zoning ah yikes that's why it's giving me some issues let's see if we can we can f yeah we okay so we are just not gonna be able to have zoning right there oh that's a bummer um let's see if we can find a three by five then we can't but a three by four is probably okay as well we've got a few different options this one's looking a little bland so it's probably gonna be this one here and in close alignment and good placement Nice, and maybe a 2x4 as well, just to place here. This one is beautiful as well. Really good looking building. Just gonna make sure that it's zoned up. And then I'm I'm actually gonna line it as close to the neighboring building as I can. So that's a little too close. There you go. Alright, so we've got a beautiful section of um, level 5 or almost all level 5 at least, medium density North American type housing here. And I think this is a location that really makes sense for developers to build this type of development um, when the city was really booming, just due to the proximity to all the cool things and uh, the views, of course. Now, another little cool thing you can do is that if you actually move the buildings back a bit, let's see, we can squeeze this one real close to the pathway. And it still has road connection. So here, for instance, uh, then it still has proper connection, but you can actually just about fit some trees in in front of the building. So you can actually have like some uh, some nice surface stuff here with some trees alongside. And that is going to look really great. So if we just upgrade these row houses, let's see, we'll say residential uh, row level five. One three is yeah that seems to be their size. We'll just use some of these uh, beautiful ones from both themes, and then if we move them back a bit, let's see. Then hopefully we are also able to to actually have trees in front of them. We'll try. We'll try. Get as close as possible, and we can even stack them a bit closer than. When they when they actually spawn due to zoning, so that's pretty cool. Unfortunately, we can't like stack them on top of each other. That would have, of course have been really nice, you know, to if we could disable like some clipping or something. And this is not gonna work because I have to rezone it for US. There you go. All right, so we move that back a bit. So hopefully we can actually fit in some trees in uh, in front of this entire street this entire row of buildings which i think would look really really great um, but let's do let's just do a bit of surface work first uh, because we've got a bunch of different types of uh, surfaces here and they probably automatically actually extend to the road so even if i were to do 
like a tile service surface and try to bring that out front it wouldn't oh it's actually gonna overlap well that's absolutely perfect because then i just need to select the tile i want let's see and it's probably the first one here and then hopefully i'm actually able to just create one massive sidewalk something like this Oink. oh i missed something up there there you go now we've got almost a uniform pavement there's a small section here that clips over but i think that's all right So you'll only be able to fit in some of the smaller trees in here, such as the spruce or the poplar from the European theme. And I think we're going to go with the, the poplar. I think that's going to be uh, a pretty good bit. So we're just going to, we're basically just going to eyeball it wherever we have space. It seems we have a bit less space in front of these row houses, so I might have to adjust that. But this adds like a whole additional level to your street detailing. Um, because of course it yeah, just allows for that much more extra work and you can of course place a bunch of props here as well such as benches for instance which we might also do just to really make this a nice place i'll bring up our menu again and look for a garden bench of sorts and uh, let's see this one is nice looking just add a bunch of benches out front and I don't think anyone's going to be surprised when I tell them that all developments here on Broad Street are fully occupied and that all the citizens are happy. Spacious homes, walking distance to everything. So yeah, very, very expensive place to live. In fact, I think the area around Broad Street is so nice that it deserves a little district of its own. Uh, and I'm gonna name it something quick and stupid. And then if you've got a suggestion for the name of this area, let's see how creative I am. So it's east of downtown on the lower side. Hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna need you guys help with the, um, the name of this area and a bit of backstory. So why do we have such beautiful old architecture here? And why is this area so expensive? Uh, let me know in the comments. And while we are on the topic of suggestions and renaming, a couple of episodes back, we built this massive port up here, which uh, now has about 7,000 jobs, which is really awesome. But I did ask for some suggestions for how we're actually gonna name the older uh, inner city harbor and this newer port up north and i guess um i mean the the most upvoted suggestion was to just rename this to old port so we're gonna go with that uh, but i'm gonna implement another suggestion as well which is to rename the port here to north port uh, and this suggestion in particular is a little interesting because I am Danish and it's using the example of the city of Aalborg in northern Denmark as uh, as kind of an example of, of uh, moving uh, a port area from what used to be a, you know, inner city port and then moving it out of town uh, due to, you know, demands for more size as well as a movement to kind of remove industry from inner city areas. So a very cool suggestion. Uh, happy to have uh, renamed these. We also recently grew Chestnut from a small quaint town. This used to be its downtown actually to a proper city with a much needed big downtown down here with a, I guess, yeah, this is a marina if you're wondering. <laughs> And I ask for suggestions for a name that would be a bit more fitting for an actual city. And there are tons of great suggestions. I think I'm going to go with this one, which was also the most liked one by you guys. And we're going to go with New Chelsea. Uh, bring in some, uh, some British influences. And I'm thinking, while we're here in New Chelsea, and we are on a mission to try and introduce some more affordable housing units, Let's try and build the biggest public housing uh, segment of the city so far using some of these new tools. Uh, we've got a spot here uh, near this clover leaf where I think this would be a, a pretty good spot to utilize. Currently it's just uh, low density single family housing. So we're going to transform this into some New York style, you know, section 9 public housing. 
uh, and we are gonna use all the surface painting and uh, the new tools we have available for you know planting trees and so on and hopefully it's gonna look nice so let's uh, just dive into it
and something quite remarkable has happened as we've actually managed to satisfy all high density residential demand i don't think we've been able to do that for quite a few episodes uh so that's pretty nice but then again this area is really really dense it you know offers almost 1900 households and it's not nearly full uh yet so it's going to be interesting to see just how many people actually move in here and as I mentioned, uh, my idea was to go for like a New York, Queens, Brooklyn style uh, public housing project. Uh, I think these fit rather well uh, with that with that style at least. Uh, might look a little odd next to a low density uh, single family housing. But if we assume these houses are a little older and that there used to be something else here, then I guess during the 60s or 70s doing a housing shortage, then it isn't too unrealistic to imagine that the uh, Riverview City Council would repurpose uh, this lot uh, to um, to something like this to provide some cheap and affordable housing. Um, I added uh, one of the taxi depot buildings. Uh, don't know why, but I guess it kind of looks like uh, it does say taxi, which is odd. But uh, from afar, it kind of just looks like a maintenance facility for the janitors. Uh, and then lots of open space in between the buildings, uh, lots of paved service, surfaces, uh, lots of barbecues and uh, bench sets and sheds and lots of good stuff. Um, got a few basketball uh, courts here as well, some uh, open gyms and of course we've got a, a half a football pitch out here. I guess I'll be flamed for not calling it soccer but that's such an odd word for Europeans so it's gonna be half a football pitch. <laughs> Uh, added a parking lot as well um, and yeah I'm very very happy with how this area uh, turned out of course you can probably imagine that birdsong glade is not really what we actually want to call this so uh, once again if you're creative out there and have a suggestion and maybe a backstory for this uh, public housing project then feel free to comment and I'll pick one of you guys suggestions because birdsong glade come on anyways i think that's a wrap for this episode i cannot stress how much fun it's been to do some actual proper detailing in city skylines 2 uh, and just getting started out with it i've i've really tried to kind of save this moment and really get creative with the limitations of the vanilla game but with that said i'm very very happy to now have jumped into the uh, developer mode plus mods combination uh, and and trying my hand at a bit of extra detailing and i'd be very curious to hear what you guys think about this episode since it's quite a departure from my other city scanners 2 episodes i guess if you're a regular here on the channel back in the city scanners 1 days then you're actually used to me doing uh, highly custom uh, high detail builds so yeah gonna be interesting to hear i'm gonna post a screenshot now of all the mods that i've actually enabled for uh, for this save game uh, here on the screen now i might not have used all of them and it's not that many fortunately and they do work rather stable uh, but i will say that the biggest game changer for this particular episode has probably been the inbuilt developer mode that really just enables a bunch of new detailing options as always i want to uh, shoot a few nice cinematics to wrap up this episode and express my gratitude for the support the all the nice feedback all the nice suggestions and all the help you guys give me and naming stuff and coming up with ideas i really do appreciate it and i'm so privileged to be in this position so thank you so much for all of that and for watching of course uh, and i hope you have a, a great day or evening out there see you all in the next one goodbye